Well, let's hit the, uh, first, the, the first question. So the post-apocalypse tea, right? We thought it was a nice theme. There's so many, uh, given that we're in a pandemic right now and the TV shows are all focused on apocalypse, whether it's zombies or viruses. If, you, if, if it was the end of the world and you could only bring one tea, that's kind of the spirit of that question. So what would the tea be that you would bring? Um, you can just raise your hand if you want to go first or if you've got something ready. I feel like I've been really... Do you got a... Oh, go ahead, Simmerji. Yeah, uh, I, I've got a clear favorite. I, I drink this tea usually on my birthdays. It's uh, it's the ginger mint. It's one of my favorites. Nice, nice. The ginger mint, yeah, that's a great choice. So I was kind of torn, like, should I bring a really, like an everyday drinker or should I bring something super fancy? So you went to, this, to the fancy side and bring just a luscious, perfect black tea. Just about perfect, I would say. If you're at the end of the world and, and like everything's apocalyptic, you might as well enjoy what you got. I agree. I think you made a good choice. If I could only choose one, it would be probably a, a shoe pour. One of these, nice. maybe. Uh, let's see. This one is a uh, uh, Shagwan 2015, and this one is a one a 1999 Maiden tribute. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. No, are those bricks? Those look like brick puar. Nice. Yeah, they're two fifty gram bricks. Nice. Very nice. And um, Cindy, do you have a tea in mind? Or the apocalypse? Um, I hadn't really thought about the questions, but I, I am really an oolong fan, so I might bring this. Oh, nice. The Young Chun Fo Show. Nice. <laughs> that is a good um, I'm one. really enjoying that and if I had to if I, if this was gonna you know, like go on for a long time this apocalypse I might definitely want to be drinking a, a good oolong that's I really enjoy those nice yeah you get good mileage out of them too awesome great choice and um Brandon um, I'd probably have to go with more of an everyday tea um, yeah. I have this really beautiful um, jasmine green tea Oh, nice. uh, this particular one that I that I acquired, it's super like scented um, to the point where it's almost like drinking like fresh flowers its, itself. So I, I'd imagine in a post-apocalyptic world, it would remind me of the nice. all the beauty that existed before it happened. <laughs> nice. That's a great that's a great reason to grab a scent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Igor, how about you? Yeah. <clears throat> I like um, 1999 uh, Shoe Puer from Mengai. <laughs> um, it's uh, very uh, tasty and woody and aroma. Nice, beautiful. And is that uh, is that loose leaf or is that in a like loose a, leaf? Yeah. It's loose leaf. Very nice. Wow, that's a definitely definitely a move towards a fancier post-apocalyptic tea. Cool. Yeah, I was more leaning to the everyday side too, because I just like something that's, um, it's just like refreshing and down to earth. But I think you guys who are bringing the fancy ones or the flowery ones nailed it. Oh, did I forget you, Eric? No, I mean, I just figured it out, what I'd use. Oh, perfect. Great timing. Yeah. Um, it would have to be uh, a Korean tea called a Baliyo Cha, and I choose a certain farmer, Kim Jong-yol, who's just absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's a premium tea, for That's sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's, it's so many brews, so many steeps. Not a lot. I mean, 10. That's a lot for that kind of a tea. If it ended what, up... What, being, sorry, which tea was that, Eric? It's, it's, a, it's called a Baliyo Cha. It's from... Oh. I, I have some of that. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, very, yeah. Yeah, this is very good tea. I love That's it. Sucha? <laughs> Was that from Sucha, Brandon? Yeah, Sucha tea. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's very, very good uh, Fender green tea. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, Value Cha is more like a dark oolong. You could classify it. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. 
kind of pushing to the heavier oxidation sort of thing. Yeah. Nice, nice. Like kind of, okay, cool, cool. Uh, I should also point out that HR Holiday is also speaking in the chat as well. Um, they said, I do white 2T road to nowhere, crazy strong 2019 uh, Shang. Oh, perfect. Thanks for bringing the uh, chat to my attention, Brandon. I kind of missed that it was down there on the bottom. Right. Okay. Thanks, HR, for throwing that in. I'm just going to type it back. Thanks. But she can hear us, right? So I guess I don't need to type. But yeah, thanks for bringing that to my attention, Brandon. I totally missed that. So yeah, if you guys see somebody chat, I'm kind of trying to focus on a lot here in this, and I didn't see that pop up. So cool. I was going to say, Eric, you could make a whole Netflix series out of your quest to get to Korea to find the farmer during the apocalypse to get the tea that you need to survive the apocalypse. That's a whole... Yeah. That's season one of a whole series right there. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, that is the post-apocalyptic tea. This is an interesting one we threw in. The second one is, it, do you have a tea in your collection that you're... You don't really like it, but you can't get rid of it. You don't want to throw it out. And those ones tend to last forever because you don't really necessarily want to drink them, but you, for whatever reason, you don't want to throw it out. So you just kind of, I don't know, jump in. If anybody has one of those, it's a bit of a weird category. I don't keep any of those around. And you I don't have to divulge who it's from or anything. You can just say you have a black tea. I just heard. I'll just burn right through it. I'll just drink it every day till it's gone. Oh, so you have the opposite. Uh, you don't you don't kind of painstakingly hang on to it and, and torture yourself. You just hunker down and do the job. That's a good, yeah. that's a good strategy. Nice. Anybody got one of those? Yeah. It's, it's, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I have a black tea from Anhua uh, Hunan that just tastes a lot like cotton candy. It's very sweet and I don't know, it's like they added sugar to it, but it's just too sweet for me, but I just can't get rid of it. And I, I, it's almost addicting. It's very tasty and it's very warming, very warming. I like it, but nice. it's very sweet. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Are you guys okay to uh, rejoin in about 10 minutes? It looks like we're gonna run out of time, but I just, all I have to do oh. is reboot the meeting, so we'll, we'll dive back in. Anybody else got a, one of those pesky teas that you, not I, I have a, I have a Genmecha tea that I bought from just like a random uh, Japanese store. Um, tastes okay, but I recently bought a higher quality uh, version of it and it's like night and day between the two so I don't really want to drink the uh, the lesser of the two anymore so right so it kind of got outclassed y yes right right so now it's, it's it's languishing in the sidelines have you done a side by side or are you too too afraid to? um I haven't but now that you mention it maybe I yeah maybe if I'm thinking, if you just to, <laughs> I don't know it'll just pop out the uh like it'll just expose why that is maybe a little more and it's just fun sometimes who knows maybe you'll find some redeeming qualities sim you got something yeah uh, it's a it's a weird one for me because i typically uh like a lot of blacks and oolongs but i've never really enjoyed poor um especially the lower quality poor they they've put me off poor for a long time um right. I started off with some of these coins initially a friend gave me and, and uh, you know, I, the taste just threw me off of tea for a while. Oh, wow. So getting back to it, it was uh, actually your seminar in Toronto on, on poor was the first time I had poor after that. And it was, thank God, it was so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because if I, you, you kind of had a phase with poor, didn't you? Like you were... Am I wrong? I feel like you were into poor. Yeah, I did. I, I bought a lot of poor. Uh, I drank a lot of poor. And then, uh, like, I, after your seminar, I went back to poor. But uh, I've kind of come full circle. I'm back to black teas now. They're, they're my thing. Nice. Cool. Nothing wrong with that. Hence your ginger and May choice. Awesome. Yes. I love it. Awesome. Cindy, I think we cut you off just as you were about to jump in. Well, I was thinking about... Um, I was in this really cute tea shop in Lisbon um, not that long ago, and I chose some teas that I was, you know, kind of familiar with, and they were all 
Chinese tea, and they were all really, turned out really good. But the um, woman working there said, "You didn't choose any Portuguese teas. You should get. You're here in Portugal." And um, said, so, "Oh, okay, I will." And I I bought two, and I can't say either of them are very good, but I can't get rid of them because they again have that emotional attachment of I really liked the lady, I liked the shop, I liked being in Portugal, but I think they should stick to port. Um, <laughs> the port was really good, the tea, not so much. That's what I was about to ask. Like, these were actually Portuguese tea plants? Yes, they do. Oh. I didn't even know they grew tea in Portugal, but yeah. when I was there, I didn't even know I was going to Portugal. I was on a magical mystery tour, and so it was like, surprise, open up this envelope in the airport. You have tickets to Porto, and I literally said, where's Porto? I didn't even know. Um, but but yeah, so um, when I got, I went from Porto to Lisbon, and when I was in Lisbon, I looked up the tea shop there, and it was just like super cute, and that's where I learned they had Portuguese tea. I didn't even know they did, but they do um, have tea plants, and they do process tea, but I think maybe they are, maybe not, maybe haven't done it so long, because it's not really, I yeah. didn't find it that good, but no. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of, you see all these countries popping up all over the place that suddenly they're growing tea. I've even seen um, Scotland. There's a tea farmer in Scotland, if you could imagine. Oh, I was about and, to say uh, that. Yeah, but yeah. I, think they, I think they get a bit of a surprise when they realize how hard it is to make like really good tea. It's actually, a, it, it's quite a, it's, well, it's extremely tricky, right? So, but it's, I can see how that would be, uh, you get that sort of, it's almost like a souvenir. So you've got a sentimental right. attachment. You don't want to ditch it, but it's not so, maybe not so fun to drink. Right. Awesome. Anybody else? Tea that you can't get rid of, tea that you don't really like. Oh, maybe uh, I see there's a chat. Let me check it. Yeah, Hey Cha Holiday said, just ten, she just tends to dislike the bud heavy whites and most greens. I forget about the greens and trade the whites. Mm. Nice. All right, the next one, let's move on. Uh, maybe we can, uh, maybe this is a good time to, uh, we've only got about four minutes left, so maybe this is a good time for me to just reset the meeting. If you guys want to just, but we're good to restart. Um, wait a on. So, uh, the next one was, oh, this is a fun one. This is the, your weirdest tea, the weirdest tea in your collection, which is a pretty, you know, you get to define weird. This should have some fun stories. Anybody got any wacky teas in their collection? I have to say this one. That one. The one I'm drinking, the smoked green tea. Right, right. Yeah. It's really from fun that it's homemade. Like it's, uh, um, you know, right from her... Uh, Backyard. Yeah, backyard and probably kitchen, right? Yeah, yeah. Um she doesn't sell it, so uh they um she gift it to me and I of course compensate them. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Hunan, right? You said that was from Hunan. Yes, yes. I forget the name of the village. It's about an hour south of Anhua. Right. And you said it's smoked over what? Over, do you know where the, uh, the sweet gum seed, pod, uh, seed pods are? We call them gumballs. Ah, that's, gumball. that's what I heard you say, gumballs. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that From threw me off, I gotta admit. Tree. Yeah. I got kind of kicked out of the meeting or something. Here we go. There we go. So that's why you call them gumballs, because it's a sweet, it's a gum tree. Yeah. Uh, that's the pods of it. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And does that give it a sweet smoke or? Yeah, a very sweet smoke. I I guess I'm not great with taste me, um, me. or pairing right. taste, but so that was your odd, an odd, not an oddball tea, but an odd gumball tea, sort of. <laughs> awesome. Any other oddballs out there? I don't know how weird it is, but it's a bit. Uh, it was a bit weird to me when I saw it on the website, but it's a it's a green Earl Grey actually, and the green tea originates from Sri Lanka actually. Okay. Um, and um, actually, it's, the, the, the bergamot is like overwhelming. 
Right. Yeah, it's, it's quite quite something. Um, but I, I enjoy it. I like a strong, like Earl Grey was my favorite tea before I got into the fancier teas and I Great. still love it. Um, so I, I enjoy a really strong scented tea. Yeah, I still love me some Earl Grey too. It has a time and a place. That's awesome. And it, but it's a green. So is that like a, is it a pretty bitter green base or how does that stand up to the board? Uh, it's pretty bitter. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to brew it for too long or too hot or else right. it, it's, it, or it's very astringent. And so, so if you had to choose between Earl Grey, like a, and a green Earl Grey, what would you go for? Uh, I think I'm still partial to a black Earl Grey, but uh, this one's very interesting. I, yeah, I'd buy it again. Weird. Never heard of that before, so that's a neat one. Anybody else got a strange tea? We've got a smoked green and a, a green Earl Grey. I don't think this is really strange, but it's not my usual tea. Just the little ones that are, the pores that are packed in the um, mandarin oranges. Oh, those are cute, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, packed in there. Yeah, that's pretty, um, you're right. It's not that strange in the East, but you don't see them too often here. Those little tangerine puars or orange puars. I've been thinking about trying to do that myself, but I'm, I have two problems. One, I can never peel a, a mandarin or a tangerine or anything that precisely. <laughs> I've seen Jen's mom try it though, and her mom is really good. You gotta be really patient and just slowly, slowly uh, oh, you just things. scoop it out? I mean, just kind of, I think you oh, She got the whole thing out, it, like, kind of intact through a smaller opening. Like, but she yeah. just stretched it and then kind of peeled it from the inside and popped it out. And she had the whole, and then the, and then the top peel ended up to be like a lid. So she just put it back. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I don't know if she ended up packing it with Puar, but uh, I've been working on that ever since I saw her do that. I was like, oh. That's, and I was even thinking it would be fun to do a larger quantity in a pomelo, uh, you know, in a big pomelo uh, peel. Yeah. But uh, it's still on my to-do list. So that's a good one. That's definitely a fun one. Anybody else got any strange, strange teas in the collection? I am uh, relatively new in the, the world of tea. <laughs> But uh, I have a um, king of black seed aroma. <laughs> this is a popular um, olong tea. What, what was the aroma? A uh, king of black seed. King of black seed. I don't know. King? A ginkgo. Oh, oh ginkgo. Oh, ginkgo. <laughs> mm, I know that. I, I, there's another name for that, but. Uh, a yeasting tree, mm. right, right. They turn very yellow in the autumn, right? Bright yellow with those um, Y-shaped leaves. Yeah. And they just all fall at once. There's a lot of ginkgo mm. trees in St. Louis. Right on. All fall at once. So you have one that's scented with that, with their nut? Fun. That's pretty cool. So you have a, is it ginkgo scented? No, no, no. King of, of duck sheep. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Duck shit yeah. tea. Dankong or long. Dantong. Yeah. Oh, oh, duck shit tea. Yeah, I those. <laughs> <good tea. laughs> Honeysuckle, yeah. Nice. You don't uh, understand me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's perfect. perfect. We got it. We got it. Yeah, we understand. It's very oh. popular, but. Uh, I, I like uh, this tea. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. We, we, was it, so was it Yasha Syang? The, was that the aroma that you heard? I, I still didn't get the exact aroma, Eric. Did you hear it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yasha Syang, so, yeah, we. <laughs> oh, cute. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Ooh. Oh, so they've, they've made it nice. That's <laughs> 2014 when it first came out. Um, when it was just straight up Yasha Syung, sort of the farmer's joke was just to call it duck shit tea, allegedly because the ducks wander around the tea bushes and fertilize. Or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I heard it was so that the neighboring farmers wouldn't take cuttings from it. 
Right, so, right. Gave it a nasty name. Yeah. So, so now they're coming out with nicer names like King of Duck or, or um, even <laughs> I've even heard them um, forget about the ducks and just give it some other Xiang. But I still yeah. prefer the uh, original name. It's cute and fun. And indeed, it fits into the weird category. Thanks. thanks it's nice tea. Time. It's delicious, I think. It yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, thanks for persevering, Igor. I appreciate that. I know it's tricky. We're doing our best. I wish I, I, wish I knew Spanish a little better. I speak French okay, but Spanish not so much. Here's a fun one. I think, I hope it's fun for you guys. Uh, it, it's just, it's a nice one for tea boast the most because this is the, uh, the most expensive tea in your collection. So this can be sometimes fun when some, hopefully not disappointing. Oh, Symergy. I had a higher price one than this before. It was a uh, 1987 uh, green label, uh, green mark CNNP. Uh, cake, but this is what I, the most expensive one I got now. It's a Wooly Cliff Tea Rogueway, and it comes with these little. Oh, nice! Oh, Chinese tea shop. All individual little, little packets. Right, right. And does it say um, which? Um, does it have the micro terroir on it, or? I was I just. It's, um, uh, just reminds me of my trip to uh, when I was there. We actually walked up to Matao Yan, and uh, I got to see Horsehead Rock and the gardens around there, around the temple. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice one. How do you like it? Is it a good one? It's very potent. It's uh, very rich. Nice, nice. But because of the price, I only drink it occasionally. <laughs> Special occasion tea, right? Yeah. Anybody else got anything that they want to? boast about? I have a small amount, not a small amount, maybe 200 grams left of a Dongfeng Meiren, the, uh, what is it called? No, 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 not that. It's a, uh, it's a Den song that's um, supposedly one of Mao's favorite. They called it um, like the red song or something. Oh, why can't I think of it? It'll come back to you. It'll come back. Yeah, yeah. But it, I got it in 2013, and I can't imagine, compared to what I paid for it, and it was heavily roasted, and I've been keeping it as best as I can, and it's matured very well. Nice. I think it's, it's just a pleasure to drink. But oh, that's awesome. Imagine. So it's a good sip, and it it's, uh, hasn't needed re-roasting or anything. It's holding up pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. I gotta look this up. Anybody else? I don't have anything that thing that's expensive, but I do have something I wanted to share that is priceless. Oh, nice. And really didn't cost anything for me. I just made a donation. But because I missed last week and I really wanted to share this. Oh, perfect. I have this tea pet that I really, really, <laughs> really love. Cool, awesome. And it's an otter with a teacup on its belly <laughs> so that when you pour tea over it, the tea lands in the cup and the cup is the only portion that's glazed. So it, the tea sits there. My, my husband had a vision oh, of this. My God. <laughs> he said, you know, I, I dreamed of this, this perfect tea pet for you, an otter holding a teacup. And I thought that is such a cool idea. And I sometimes um, go do pottery with a, a friend that doesn't live too far from me. And I told her about it and she made it for me. And then I asked her, you know, oh, how much should I pay you? And she said, oh no, you don't have to pay me anything, but you can make a donation to a charity. And so that's what I did. But her, her name is Lady Otterby, the pastor that um, married my parents and baptized me as a baby's name was Reverend Otterby and in his honor, we have uh, Lady Otterby, and I just really love her. Oh, and nice. she's the um, width of the slats on my tea tray. And so what I do is I move her along each new infusion to keep track oh. of my infusions. 
And that really helps me because I just totally forget what infusion I'm on. I think but I can look there. and see, you know, which slat Lady Otterby is resting on. And then that, that reminds me where I am. That is awesome. And when you, when you pour the, the water on it, it fill, it, it goes into the cup and stays there. Right. That's awesome. It's smart to have a counter too. That's brilliant. I think we can all relate to, you know, around six infusion, six, seven, eight, you're kind of like, Oh, it gets fuzzy. Which, which infusion am I on? So yeah. if you have that habit of just slide the otter along. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. That's very cool. Tea pets are awesome. I found the name. Perfect. Um, Dong Fang Hong Dan Song. So it's um, the East is Red, one of Mao's supposed favorite that he renamed. Cool. It's, it was really hard to find. And I went to several farmers in Udong and finally found one that had it left. So you got it from the Wudong region? Yeah, I was, in the, I was there for a few days nice. staying with a farmer. And he didn't have it, but he knew several other farmers that had it. And they were all sold out until I begged. Because uh, you, so knew, you knew they had some them. in their private stack. I knew they had some. Yeah, they always do. Yeah, Anybody Spe else? Speaking of private stash, uh, I got one from somebody I know in, in the city. And uh, it's not wasn't really technically for sale. But he had a private stash, and he showed me pictures from his trip, in, and he was out at 105K up in, in Taiwan at Lin's Farm. And so that's uh, Lin's Farm, uh, High Mount Nulong, uh, from 105K, 105 kilometers up oh. the road. Oh, OK. So, yeah, it's fairly, fairly rare. <laughs> Nice. And yeah, what kind of a... Uh, it's quite green, uh, a ball oolong. Like, it's, it's very green. No processing at all. And the leaves are fairly small, so the balls are very small. They're very oh, tiny. Interesting. Quite sweet, but um, it's sort of subtle flavors. Okay. It, wow. Neat. That's a good one. And is it in, does it fit the green oolong profile, like uh, more like aromatic, floral? Yeah, it would be definitely a jade oolong, very like floral notes. Right on. Nice. Anybody else? I don't well, think I have anything that's particularly expensive. So. <laughs> the next one is another fun one. And... Uh, it's the tea that you've had, not necessarily the oldest tea in your collection, but the tea that you've had the longest, that's been the longest in your possession. That's an interesting one. Sometimes they're those super special ones that we just drink for special occasions, and sometimes they're just Maybe it's something you have put away to age. I have a Rogue, I can't remember the name of the, the producer. When I went in 2009, I've had it ever since. I don't have much left. It's in a small jar. Uh, I didn't buy that much, but it was very heavily roasted and it's finally mellowed out like three years ago. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful. So you were waiting for it to just tone down a bit. Mm -hmm. Slowly. So he told me to tighten it up, fill it to the brim, tighten it up. Still right. had some air coming out. but. Right. Um, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Good one. Cindy, I think I saw you grab a cake there. Well, I don't know if you were I'm just... just thinking, I haven't been into tea all that long, so I haven't had anything a long time. I've only been sure. into it a little over a year. That's all right. Um, I don't know, this is probably not the tea I've had the longest, but I know this is the first um, tea cake that I ever bought. Um, and I've only, I've only used maybe a bit of it. Um, it's just uh, got this cute little monkey I on it. 
and what it's um my pronunciation if you can figure out what i'm saying it will be a miracle um cho wong hu ming hai shido bing cha that's what it's hmm. but i don't know have any idea what that means <laughs> but yeah chen's not here i heard meng hai so is it a puar yeah right it's okay okay it's a, it's a cooked poor um shu puar okay yeah and it's one that i got uh, shortly after i got into tea i found out that there is a vendor in my town an online vendor um who's like super nice and when i found this out i was like shocked his studio isn't really open to the public but he's super nice and wow well, i just texted him and said i'm just into tea and um he says oh you can come over today and i think i spent like three hours with him just talking and it was just so interesting and i remember you know getting this at that time and then i met his wife who has a kitchen shop and i said um oh i'm so sorry i took so much of your husband's time the other day and she's like there is no place he'd rather be than in his studio talking about tea so don't feel bad at all but um i think that i know that's the first pour i ever bought nice uh much like cindy and igor i haven't been in tea that long but this is one that i've had since the very beginning i don't drink it that much because i find i have to be in the mood for it but it's called Imperial Imperial Puar. Okay. It's a, it's a shoe Puar, and I just spilled it everywhere. Um, and, uh, I bought it uh, probably on my first real like tea binge um, in terms of like going out and buying a bunch of stuff. Right. Um, it's very. It's by far the darkest, most robust Puar that I have. Okay. Um, it it brews very dark. It's delicious, but um, uh, again, it's one that I find I have to be in the mood for. And funny story with this one is um, because I'm in Toronto, obviously I go to the Toronto Tea Festival every year. This past year, I volunteered to do the tea tasters box, which basically they give you a bunch of unlabeled teas um, and you have to taste them and you have to rate them and then um, when the tea festival actually happens a few months later, they reveal what teas they were and the vendors where you can buy them. And, you know, you rate them like first, second, third kind of thing. Right. So this this past year, I did puar tea, and they only, they only had three puars to taste. But uh, one of them, the very moment I tasted it, I knew exactly which one it was because it was it was it was this one. <laughs> oh no way! Yeah, yeah. So I, I took a sip. I know exactly what this is. So. Wow. So, so you quite, quite, that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I haven't had this one for a really long time, maybe fall of 2017, but it's a 1993 Shaguan Minikochas. Okay. Oh. Uh, what was it? Cha? It's a shoe core, but it's a uh, Shaguan. Wow. And it's in little mini tour? Mini yeah. Tour? And what I liked about this one and why I immediately bought it when I tasted it was this one has a mass of Huegon and you get that jujube uh, date flavor. Oh, nice. Nice yeah. jujube dates. Yes. It was sold on the spot. I said, I don't, I don't care how much it costs. It just depends on how many I'll buy then. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is a nice. That is a nice, really nice flavor in Shukwar. I really like that too, the chuju date when that starts to come out. We were having our 20, uh, we have our, uh, a 2015 shoe that comes in 100 gram cakes and that has been um, aging really nicely and it's getting, it's starting to have those notes that I, we go, that's our evening tea, right? So we pretty much every evening we'll have a, a bit of Shukwar, whether it's a coin or the 2015 or something like that. And that is a, that's kind of, the flavor I look for too in Shukwar. Nice. All right. So anybody else? Uh, most, uh, what was longest in possession? Longest one that's been here? I started uh, buying tea only one year ago, but I have my second cake. <laughs> nice. It's a uh, Seng Puer 2014. Nice. Uh, Lao Yu by Chawan Sok. Very nice. I said, 
So you've worked your way almost halfway through that, right? You got the, was a whole cake when you got it? Nice. What? It looks like you're about halfway, just, ah. about, just <laughs> yes. about halfway through it. That's a and fun. I have, uh, the monkey. <laughs> Oh, nice. oh, you do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but this is a uh, Shampoir. <laughs> Shampoir. Mm. Nice. Very nice. All right. And the last one, and this is probably one of my favorites, the one, because this is really what tea is all about. Like Cindy has shared with us a few times, but the most memorable tea, like tea, I find tea is really something that is a, uh, you know, brings back fond memories and there's lots of uh, emotional ties to tea. So I like the, I like the concept of a most memorable tea. So um, yeah, if you guys have any that is, that pops out and it doesn't necessarily need to be the tea, it can be the whole experience around the tea, right? It doesn't need to be the tea knocked you off your feet kind of thing, but although that's possible. I can, uh, I can start for this one because I have a pretty recent experience last spring, actually, in, um, in Wuyi, we, we, were, uh, we were looking for, and I apologize if you've heard this because I've told the story a couple times, but we were looking for a particular uh, producer in the, city of Wuyi, in the city area of Wuyi. And we were with Jen's mom. I didn't know we were looking for a producer, but Jen's mom was looking at, Jen Lee was looking at her phone and she had a picture on her phone and she's looking at the streets, like kind of looking at the shop profiles and looking at this picture. And it, I thought we were lost because it looked like she was trying to find something. And indeed what she was doing was comparing a picture that her business partner who had uh, unfortunately um, recently died but he told her, you got to go find this producer. So all she had was the picture that he sent her of this street. Uh, and the sh he took a picture of the street and the shop. So she was looking for the shop like this. Long story short, we found the shop. We found the producer. And we sat down to have tea with them. And they walked us through a bunch of their tea. And then he pulled out a Bainian Lao, Lao Tsong Shui Xian. So a hundred-year-old bush. Shui Xian. And uh, the instant I sipped it, um, I got a, like from the base of my spine up, up in my back, I just like warmed up and almost like a, a very pleasantly. It wasn't a super fast. It was a slow rise. And then all my hair stood up. I showed Jen and Jian Li at the time. Right away, I said, look at this. And that, and it came up slowly and then kind of came out my pores and all my hair had goosebumps after that. And um, Jeanne Lee's response was she showed me her arm. And although she's not as furry as me, um, she also had goosebumps. But me, her and I had a similar reaction, really explosive chat seat. And then he, uh, when we finished that tea up, he said, come on and come on. And we jumped in his truck and he drove us for about half hour, 40 minutes. And we walked, and that's the video where we go in and find this ancient tea garden. That's where he walked us into this garden where we had the tea from. That was really, I, like, I'll never forget that. The whole story around it was a little bit magical. And uh, yeah, so it was, that was our day, like basically was surrounded around that tea and that producer find. So that was a fun one for me, yeah. And I guess it's more of a, like an experience than particularly the tea. Um, last summer, I went to um, Halifax. I'd never been to Nova Scotia before and a friend, well actually my friend joined me later. So it was just me in, in Halifax. Um, so I'm just kind of wandering around looking for things to do, which they had several really nice tea shops that I visited, but uh, there was a, a, like a sandwich board out on the harbor there um, there's a Chinese junk that you can get tours of the harbor and um, so I called them and they said they hadn't really started the tours yet for the season but you know how many were in my group and I'm like oh well I'm, I'm by myself and they're like well we'll get back to you and they said okay well we'll go ahead and we'll start today 
And so it was just me and the captain of the boat and his wife and her little daughter. And we sailed around in this, I mean, it's a real Chinese junk boat. Um, wow. I can't remember now how they ended up having it there in Halifax, but this, this man was really into Chinese junks and he had found this old one for sale. And um, so we sailed around, he let me drive the junk. And then his wife, who's from China, she served a couple of different kinds of tea and their daughter sang these uh, Chinese songs as entertainment. And it was just so lovely. And it was his first day ever being a captain. He had been on the junk before as like maybe first mate or something like that. Right. He had just received his captain's license. And so I was their first passenger with him as the captain, and I got to have this delicious tea served to me floating around in Halifax Harbor on a Chinese junk with this young girl singing beautiful songs. It was just like surreal. It was like so cool. That is amazing. You, really you tend to think of boats like the Blue Nose, right? Schooners and stuff when you think of Halifax Harbor, but you were in a Chinese junk. That is awesome. Yeah, if you ever go to Halifax, they have this uh, junk that you can get tours on. So I'm actually from down east, uh, the pr next province over. I, my mom lives in, in New Brunswick, so there's a good chance I will do that. Yeah. And you mentioned that you visited some tea shops. So there's the World World Tea Shop, I think it's called. Yes. World Tea I'm House. There. That's, another, that's another Phil. The owner's name is Phil there as well. So I got a shout out about that. And, uh, and they also a, a kind of a unique little place that I fell in love there is called Yo-Yo Tea and Crafts. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's like a craft a store and a tea shop mm -hmm. in one. And you can go and, you know, and sit there and, and drink tea. And it was just really lovely. And then the other half of it was like a craft store. So it was an unusual mashup, but it was really fun. Yeah, I liked it so much. I went back a couple of times. Awesome. That is really, uh, I'm definitely going to look and see if that, uh, that uh, harbor tour is still there because that sounds so fun. Anybody else have a memorable story to share? That was awesome. I have a lot of memorable stories, but... Most memorable. Most memorable. Or, or the one that's at the top of your mind, whatever. The you first think. time I felt the chatsi, the, 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 the energy, I was at a friend's shop. Uh, it was technically closed, but I stayed like past the hours. And she said, look, I've got something that you might like. And she took it out and I got goosebumps, very similar feeling. Right. My palms of my hands got really warm. Warm? Warm. Mm. And I remember that. And she said, she put her hand out and she said, get close to it. And the heat from it, from her palm to mine was amazing. Right. One of those, it wasn't like euphoric or strong. It was very subtle. And it just, you could feel it move in your body. Right. In and out. And it was a very, I will never forget that. that yeah. Part. Yeah. Never forget that's that. awesome. It's one of those things that's hard to explain. Um, and I wasn't sure what to make of it when I first heard of that phenomena because I wasn't familiar with it. But uh, once it happens, you're you kind of you're like, oh, okay, so that's what it is. It's just a bit of yeah. a. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the cr the cross section of experience and flavor or what exactly it is, but it's something. Uh, you know, neat. it's I, a neat um, phenomenon. I was a big denier of it until I finally felt it. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, there's a lot of different feelings of that you know, that, that, um, that energy. Yeah. But that one I felt was just, okay, I get it. Yeah. 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 It's quite personal too. People, different people experience it differently. Yes. Cool. Anybody else? Most memorable tea moment, whether it's the tea itself, the experience, anything that's just sticking out in your mind. Probably when I got my die your link. <laughs> Because I was told I would never taste it in my life, <laughs> so it was a day. So that was that's the one at the one hundred fifth kilometer, is that right? Yeah, one hundred fifth kilometer, yeah. And right. from from Lynn's farm, he had pictures of him at the farm and at the sign, and he says, 
well i didn't really want to part with it but <laughs> nice and so that was something that is something you had been sort of looking for for a for a while well after I I'd actually, well, there's a couple of videos on like TV, TV or whatever and about this Dai Yuling and I think they had one from 104 and then I saw this one was, I'd, I'd heard of 105, which is up up at, at Lynn's uh, farm and I thought, gee, I wonder if I could get a, get some of that. And then I heard, uh, well, I actually read several articles of how China was clearing out a lot of these farms because they were actually uh, squatters on on parkland <laughs> and so they said you'll probably never get to taste it in your whole life and then I was googling it one day Google Earth and I found the farm it still exists on Google Earth so then I started looking in earnest to see if I could actually get a hold of some right. but that most of it I imagine probably fake but to this one I actually met the guy and saw pictures of you know his trip so I, 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 I concluded it's it's the real stuff <laughs> Wow, awesome. That is awesome. Anybody else got a memory a trip down memory lane they want to share with us? I have this tea. It's a uh, it's uh, it's a Japanese green tea, uh, uh shinsha, I think it's called. Essentially, it's a, it's a first pick of sencha of the year. Uh, okay. I think they usually pick it around um around April, I believe. But um the tea is very delicious, but I, I got it from a small tea shop in Kingston, uh, which um, is like that. It's a small city that's like the halfway point between Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal. It's where I grew up. Anyway, my mom still lives there. And after I got into tea, I decided to see if there's any like real tea shops in Kingston because I, I could, other than like a David's tea, I guess. Um, and there was one that came up, um, but it was the tiniest little tea shop located on the exact opposite side of town where my mom lives and she she doesn't have a car so she just takes the bus everywhere to right, get right. around the city and it was the middle of summer it was like 30 degrees outside and my poor mom i i dragged her all the way across town to take her to this tiny little tea shop and the owner is actually um she's actually originally from japan i guess okay. and when she came to canada um she founded her little uh, tea shop and she has all kinds of teas, uh, mostly catered to Western tastes, but she does have like a specialized selection of Japanese green teas. Um, and, you know, we just got talking and she told me that she had this small batch of um, a shincha tea that uh, she got from a close contact back from back in Japan. Um, and, you know, she brewed it up, you know, very carefully, proper procedure, everything. And it was just absolutely delicious. Wow. So, it's yeah. so kind of like a Japanese Tsingming kind of idea, right? Early pluck? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, it's the first plucking of the year. Nice. Very so. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I have some legacy in Kingston, too. I went to school there. So I'll, I'll look up her shop and put it in the notes on the YouTube. I, I'm a little worried for all the, the tea shop folks out there who have, you know, brick and mortar with this whole COVID thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link them in the, when, when I post this, I'm going to link them. Yeah. So that Actually, this, the shop is called uh, Cha Cha Tea. Cha cha tea. Okay, cool. Yeah, the owner is like still down very, very kind. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very cool story. Very cool. Anybody else got a most memorable tea moment? It's not really another memorable tea moment, but I kind of want to add what you said, Phil, about your friend Phil um, in Halifax. That um, I actually had emailed with him before I went to Halifax because I was checking out where all the tea places were right, right. and he wasn't going to be there I think he was going to be on like a tea buying trip or something right but uh, but he responded a number of times actually um, with other recommendations and other people that he knew that I might want to meet and all this kind of thing and just in my brief time of being in the tea world just a little over a year that has been my experience time and time again that people are so gracious yeah. I've just met the most wonderful people in this world that a year, a little over a year ago, I didn't know existed, yeah. but just to a person, everyone has been so generous with their time and their knowledge and so gracious. And this was a guy, he wasn't even going to see me. You know, he was going to, yeah. he said, I'm going to be out of town, but um, here's, you know, some, some recommendations and some other people you might want to talk to and stuff. And I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, he went right, just went out of his way to, to share the information with you. Yeah. 
yeah. find the same thing, right? The people are uh, uh, so friendly, uh, just excited about tea and excited to share mm -hmm. tea. I mean, it's really what it's all about. It's what, what this whole, this whole sort of Zoom is about. Sure, we had a bunch of funny, kind of funny questions, but it's all about sharing. Anyway, we're sort of down to less than a minute. So I want to uh, say thank you to all of you for joining and sharing your stories and sharing all of, all of the, uh, and going through those crazy questions. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, and we'll do it again sometime. I'm thinking about a spelling bee next. So I just want to say, yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be crazy and fun? Just kind of goofy. But uh, have a great afternoon. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks for sharing your time and your tea and your stories with me. All right. Thank you for hosting us. Bye-bye, everybody. Fun. We'll see you next time. So great Bye. to see you guys.